she was alive in a time when America was going through a very interesting time deciding what kind of country it wanted to be. I'm going to start recording. Yeah, well, hello there. <laughs> yeah, so I am going to talk about moms this month. Yeah, it's uh, it's May, so it's Mom Appreciation Month. Because this coming weekend, uh, if you're watching this live stream, it's um, it's Mother's Day. Mother's Day, so we celebrate moms. And, and I'm going to give the whole month to, to the best moms in history. But what about something like um, the best moms in history? Well, you have to figure out, you know, what makes a historical important person? Uh, uh, how, what did they do that was so great? And, and what made them a good mom too? But well, I did my best to find some people. And so I'm going to start with uh, Sojourner Truth. And so let's get right to Sojourner Truth. To understand Sojourner Truth, we have to talk about America's history. And, and, and uh, by the way, the women that I talk about this month are all going to be American. It just happens to be this week I'm talking about Americans. And this person, Sojourner Truth, is important because she did something interesting. She was alive at a time when America was going through a very interesting time deciding what kind of country it wanted to be. Where Sojourner Truth was born and raised was a state called New York State, and it was a part of a group of states called New England. As these are technical, it's not really important, but but for the purposes of trying to explo explain what America looked like in in the time when she was alive, um, these few states decided that slavery was wrong. For Sojourner and for many women like her, because she was a woman and she was black, uh, legally she couldn't be a slave, but she could be a bonded servant. And that is the same thing as slavery. It was just more, there's a legal term behind that. Um, so because there was a more structured way of looking at slavery during these times, that means um, the law, the letter of the law, the, the way the law was written, gave actually gave a lot of flexibility to people to argue and sue to get their own freedom. So why is this important? Well, she was one of the very, very few people to use the actual law to get herself her freedom and get uh, her fam some of her family freedom in, and then using that freedom network with other people who felt the same thing that she did, which was that women should have more equal protection than, than as, as the men and people of color, all people of color uh, would have the equal protection as people not of color, uh, white people really is what I'm trying to say. And during this time that she was doing this, uh, one of her children was sold as a slave and and she said wait a minute uh according to this new law in in my state uh you can't do that you're breaking the contract and in order for her to get her son and the rest of her family freed from slavery she used this law to argue that whoever bought her son violated a contract and that broke the contract. And that basically meant she could sue the new owner. And in exchange, instead of like a, a, pen, a, a financial penalty, she argued to get her family back and many other people too. So uh, and that became kind of a test. Can we use actual law to get the freedom of people who are the enslaved and who are you know, bonded servants, which is a form of slavery. 
And, it, and this is still going on today. To this day, we're using the law to argue and to sue to get more of those equal freedoms and protection. That's the important thing, protection for all people in the States and hopefully around the world as well. And Sojourner Truth was one of the pioneers. She wanted to argue that, hey, um, we're going to trust the law to do the right thing. And that's what she did. And she used the law to gain back freedoms for people of color, all people of color, and also as important uh, for women. Really started a whole protest legacy for the women's suffrage movement. And the women's suffrage movement basically just is just the idea that um, women get the same rights, legal rights, like voting and ownership, property ownership, and that sort of thing, as men do uh, in America. She was arguing to, that women get, get the same treatment. Uh, but also, at the same time, value women. So it's not a, uh, it, let's, let's make everything a gender neutral situation. No, she wanted women to have equal rights and protections as men, but also have women be respected as women. A person is a woman and respect that person for being a woman. And that is how they identify and they should be accepted. And then it kind of goes along with her attitudes towards, um, you know, people of color, including the indigenous communities, the native peoples of America. She really fought hard for them. She eventually moved from New York to uh, Michigan, uh, where there was a, a very large um, a, a, a in native people's rights campaign was really gaining movement up there in Michigan. And, and she was very much involved in that. And so... So that is uh, a great mom. There you go. Sojourner Truth was a great mom. Uh, Anne Jarvis. Now I'm including two people. Anne Jarvis is the person who started the Mother's Appreciation Movement. That's right. Yeah. Um, she, uh, she didn't actually organize Mother's Day as a holiday, but what she did is she really was someone who, um, campaigned to improve women's, uh, how can we, how can I say, not necessarily women's equal rights, although she was a big part of that. But really important thing is is her efforts in uh, elevating women's role in the community. So more, you know, women having the right to work. And she also was very instrumental in maternity leave. That was another thing. She wasn't the, the person who made maternity leave a legal requirement in America, but she was one of the people who was one of the loudest voices to make maternity leave a legal requirement. Um, it wasn't legal. You, you didn't, companies didn't have to do this. Um, and actually what most companies would do is if they found out a woman was pregnant, they'd just fire her. That's right. And, and that was very, very wrong. Um, and so maternity leave, maternity rights, basically just gave the, gave the legal requirement. A company has to protect your job uh, just because you're pregnant. And uh, here's, the, here's the thing. Why am I including another name here? Well, Ann Jarvis didn't actually make uh, Mother's Day a national holiday. She's not the one who did it. It was her daughter... And, and it was her daughter who really pushed for this to be a day to be accepted um, all over America uh, when her mother passed away. When her mother passed away, that was big news. And her daughter said, hey, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this to, um, to really uh, encourage uh, people to kind of wake up and, and show a little more love, show a little more respect, and also um, women's rights is all tied into uh, mother's rights. That's very much a, an important connection to have there. Why I want to bring up Anna Jarvis, she was instrumental in making the holiday an actual official holiday. 
Mother's Day was always a thing before her. But Anne Al Jarvis, the daughter of this women's rights and mother's rights um, icon, Anne Jarvis, her daughter, Anna Jarvis, uh, never had children of her own. Never married, never had children of her own, and uh, was very conservative in her politics. Very conservative. And she actually, she tried to get Mother's Day canceled. Uh, this was in the... 30s, I want to say. I think it was in the 30s. Yeah, um, in the in the 30s, even even after successfully getting Mother's Day to be a national holiday in America, it's on calendars. Uh, about 10 years later, she protested to have it taken away because she thought it was becoming too commercial. Uh, it's becoming a time when you get mom some flowers, uh, you, you make a reservation at a nice restaurant and you know, have a nice Sunday brunch for, for you and mom. Um, and she, she hated that because she thought, oh, you're not recognizing your mom and you're just making it one day. One day to do something nice for your mom as a kind of a, a, like, a, like a extra Christmas Instead of helping mom, being loving to mom, being giving to mom, and then accepting moms for who they are all year round, uh, which is what she wanted. She wanted Mother's Day to be kind of an, uh, a, a promotion for, hey, women's rights, equal rights, and also moms, protections for moms, moms in the workplace, moms in the family, um, in the community, respect for moms, you know, that's a big deal. That's an important thing. Moms are important. Moms are important. And, that, and that's a big deal. And we should be respecting that. But now you're turning it into a commercial holiday, just selling chocolates, Mother's Day cards. Who's the Mother's Day card for? Like, you, you just tell your mom you love her and you do something nice to her and do it again tomorrow. Well, what do we need one day? Yeah, so she hated the idea. Anna Jarvis who successfully turned Mother's Day into a national holiday, tried to get it canceled. <laughs> um, but thankfully, she was not successful. And many of us are going to celebrate Mother's Day uh, this week, this coming weekend. And, uh, and I'm going to say, you know what, Anna Jarvis, Anna Jarvis, I get, I get your, what you're trying to do. I feel you. Um, and he did good work, uh, but maybe uh, maybe tone it down a little bit. <laughs> but anyway, so that's going to be it for Sojourner Truth and uh, Anna Jarvis. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. 